I'm every 10 time. steps ahead of you, audience at home. You have no idea what happened before this. Now, I'd like to say that Grimdark James is here to give us all a surprise, because before the stream, I didn't know what we were doing. James has been playing it rather cagey, and in fact, he didn't know what he was doing until a couple of hours ago. So no one knew what anyone was doing. Spoon didn't know what we were doing until after he joined this call. What are we doing? I don't know. Do we want to do intros before we introduce the mysterious thing James has prepared for us tonight? Since only well, half of us are here. Let, 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 me, let me create a, one of the three mysterious things that James prepared for us tonight. True. Wow. <laughs> he really... One of three, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, we don't really know what's going on. All right. So, Henley had a baby. And as a result, we don't know when we'll be able to meet for Rogue Trader again. But we have all sworn on the secret name of the Emperor, the God Emperor, that we will finish that campaign one day. But it is not this day. Can, can I build the, on that story quickly, Arthur? That, that, okay. That when Henley indicated that this was not a great time for him now because this is when his baby is actually feeding. And, and Arthur said, oh, is that, is that going to be a problem going forward from now on? And, and I told my wife that and she burst into laughter. <laughs> like, like, like you can predict anything when it comes to babies. My point was that if they eat at 2 a.m. Polish time, right? If they're always eating at 2 a.m. Polish time, it's always going to be a problem, and therefore, it will always they, cripple the shell. They, they will continue to do the same thing until you're used to it, and then suddenly, it changes. All right. So, I'll let yeah. the dads here make the decisions in that regard, offer their wise advice. James, can I ask one real question, though? Why do we have a clock? Oh, you can get rid of the clock. It's part of the module. Uh, okay. Yeah. I just wanted to make sure you weren't going to be, actually, like, timing yeah. our answers or something yeah. like that. It's like, you have 15 <laughs> seconds to respond. Oh. <laughs> I've seen like DMs yeah. do take, that take, before. Take, take your turn, tap. Take your turn, yeah. tap. Yeah. <laughs> speed, speed oh, RP. God. <clears throat> well, you, didn't, you didn't get that dice rolling in time. It doesn't count. We're doing that for the, the season two uh, Solaris Knights. We're, do, we're playing speed chess again, you know. Take your turn and go. All right. Well, what can I say? I've done a lot of gaming this week. Spoon and I launched our new series, Snow Runner Perkins Farms Heavy Industry and Logistics. It's going well. Uh, for you, perhaps. I yeah, spent. It went terribly for me. Towards spent... the end, I said I sp spent a surprising amount of time sideways. Yeah. I, oh, I spent the like the last 40 minutes of the show going, all right, I've gotten out to where I'm going. Oh, this thing doesn't haul away. Oh, I the want. trailer. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I guess I'll leave it here. And, and that go Tatra back. is nice, though, right? It's yeah, so it good. It's a, great, it's a great truck. Yeah. So, so when I was a kid, I, I got a computer game that came out probably like late 80s called Ports of Call, which is about running a shipping, like a heavy shipping business for, for, for our sea freight. And I could never understand why I was not making any money because every port I went into, there was this free thing I could buy called ballast. And I'd just fill my ships with ballast and I'd take them places and no one would buy ballast from me, even though it was free at the Port of Origin. <laughs> my God. Amazing. <laughs> All right, what else have I been doing? Amore has taken to throwing up hairballs constantly. All right, James, you did it. You got that sub in while I was talking even. What's great is that it's covering your face. Yeah, during, during, a, during a vomit moment too. <laughs> so I've taken to trying to pick her up because she will squat that. She'll do like some Voltron zoid shit well she'll get into this weird squatting position and then her whole body will convulse forward as she prepares the hairball and i'm trying to get fast enough to pick her up and point her towards a bathroom so i can like at least get it in a tub or a toilet but when she sees me coming <laughs> she increases the velocity rate of the hairball so she's been throwing up on a lot of rugs lately i'm not super worried the vet said not to be too concerned especially because she's stopped taking her hairball greenies and started taking her teeth greenies. The solution is to force her to eat the other food, but getting Amori to do anything is incredibly difficult. 
Yeah, so. getting, getting any cat to do anything is probably incredibly difficult. <sighs> so, so I've had a lot of really, nice cats. My cat's only 16 years old. And only 16? Her. Jesus, James. She's, um, she's, <laughs> never, she's never liked wet food. She's Grandmother. Only ever, only ever eaten, like, um, uh, 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 dry food, like biscuits, you know. Uh, and she used to be, like, really fat. Like, every time we took her to the vets, like, you know, she used to lose some weight, you know, because she eats too much. And, and it's, now she's getting old. She's actually started losing weight and not eating the biscuits very much. And we thought, let's try some wet food. And that's it. She's all over the wet food now. So, um, yeah, it just means it does really stinky litter. That's all. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. All right. What else do we have? Connor Hughes and I will be meeting to do Sui Coden regularly, where we will also talk about artwork and philosophy and roast the horrible, absolutely terrible dialogue of that game. It's just, it's just bad. It's really bad. <laughs> Connor insists that it's the greatest game that was ever made, and it is not even close to being an average level of quality. Wow. Strong, <laughs> strong words from AP Gaming Real. Sui, li listen. Sucks, apparently. My God. Listen, this woman is dying and she goes, uh, I'm so weak because I'm a woman. And I was like, oh, my God, Connor, <laughs> this game would have got the whole country of Japan would have been canceled if this game was made today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's all I've got. What do you got, Spoon? Uh, let's see. Not a whole lot. I started watching um, Peacemaker on Ugh. HBO. All right. How is uh, it? Yeah. No, that's. I don't like John Cena. Oh, okay. That's fair. Um, I, it's it's been. He lacks moral character. Wait, John Cena lacks moral character. Yeah. Okay. Wow. What's your? What's the? Uh, you wanna you wanna elaborate on that? Now look, though? he's done a lot of good. Make a wish. He's probably sure. one of the number one Make a Wish guys. I think, he, I think he is the number one Make a Wish guy. But somewhat recently, in like the last two or three years, John Cena was. Uh, he said something about Taiwan being a country, and China was like, "That's it. We're canceling John Cena." And literally everyone in the WWE said, "Do not apologize." And he was like, I'm really sorry, guys. I made a huge mistake. Taiwan is not a country. So now everyone's mad at him. Mm -hmm. And the Chinese go collectively, fuck you, John Cena. You need to get on your knees and beg for our forgiveness for saying that. You think apologizing is enough? You got to apologize twice. And he was just like, all right, I'm done with this now. And I'm like, that's it, John Cena. That's what you get. You should have just stuck to your guns, man. You should have just been American, but instead, you were a bitch. I'm just, I'm just upset about him about that. It came at a really critical time when United States Navy ships were crashing into the Chinese waters, and no one could really figure out why. It was a bad yeah. time all around. Yeah. It was before United States started making, what are we making for Australia now? Is it? Submarines? Yeah, submarines. Nu nuclear, nuclear, yeah. Submarines. nuclear submarines. Yeah. It was before we escalated that level of tension. <laughs> oh, you're right. He is in movies now. Yeah, exactly. Well, I'm like, yeah, I mean, it's not it's not something that is entirely uncommon from people in that business where they where they say something that pisses off China and then go, oh shit, actually, that's where most of the world's people live. I probably shouldn't have. That can't that. no. There's no way. China and India have almost the same population yeah, size. Well, that, that's why I said most. Like not all. Most. Not even. Not, if, it's not even a third you, of the world's population if, lives in if China. You, if you take China and India. If you take how like, much people China thinks it controls, sure, maybe it has half. I'm not even talking about control. I'm just talking about people who live in a geographical area. It's like 1.3 million, 1.3 billion people. That's not yeah, even that's a, a lot. That's not even a fifth of the world's population, man. That's true. Did you see the uh, the thing this week about the change to Fight Club in China? Oh God, uh, no, James, uh, raise my blood pressure. Let's do so, it. So, so they they uh, <laughs> China um, Fight Club has pulled off all the streaming services, and it's now been put up again. And they've edited the last few minutes of the film so that right before, like all the bombs start going off, destroying all the financial institutions, it cuts to black, and then comes up with a screen saying that. 
the police were able to arrest everybody and the <laughs> explosives and Tyler was being sent to a psychiatric hospital. Oh my god. <laughs> so basically goes, yeah, this this you know, this this movie you just watched totally pointless. <laughs> of course it does. Oh man. Now look. I'm not going to lie to you and say that America hasn't done some really weird fucking editing of other countries' films or had its own international problems, but if John Cena wants to say he's the number one most American American in all of America, then... I don't think John Cena's saying that. Are you kidding me? He literally comes into the ring wrapped in an American flag. Are, are you, <laughs> no. You do know that wrestling... <laughs> isn't real right i how dare you say that to me <laughs> like it's a as show. the person who who arranges solaris nights i think you would understand that i have a keen knowledge okay. of the entire wrestling genre okay yeah and the, I, the I stagemanship that. of it yeah we don't have a john cena and solaris nights because i don't fucking like him <laughs> was it sorry just to, just to harp on on revisionist history was it was it florida that recently had the bill before the legislature about giving parents the ability to to live stream all their children's school classes they could complain to the school if they didn't like what was being taught Ooh, i don't know that sounds stupid so yeah. it's probably uh, florida yeah, it, 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 it didn't get up it, it got knocked down but it was yeah i saw that was it was before the legislature at the time Every school had to put in webcams so parents could stream their kids' classes. Yeah, that, that definitely sounds like something Florida would do. But anyway, yeah. back to back to what this is really Peacemaker. Was I started watching Peacemaker? Uh, it's it's been pretty good so far. It's it like I, I wouldn't say it's the like best comedy on HBO, but it's not bad. Um, there are some some pretty funny moments. But uh, I also started watching uh, Legend of Vox Machina, which is uh, out on Amazon Prime. Yeah. First three episodes? Yeah, first three episodes, yep. Um, pretty good so far. I've, like, it's... If you, if you know nothing about the game, like, about, or about the show Critical Role, like, it, it's great. It's fantastic. Um, I showed my 10 year old the Red Band trailer and he's like, Can yeah. I watch that? I said, No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, look, if they just remove Scanlan, you it yeah, would yeah, definitely probably, kick it like, down like, out of our yeah. status. Yeah. Uh, Maybe Liam occasionally. He likes to have his characters wandering around with their dick out, but Yeah. Well, there's the the wonderful the wonderful game of ball tag. Uh, was introduced they really there. toned it down when they went and then it's in the second and third campaigns they just stopped giving a shit anymore yeah um but yeah no i've i've, I've enjoyed it I, like the first two episodes or at least, at least the first episode it felt like the characters were like a character of themselves like i was like all right like this that but like they didn't quite feel uh like skin lenny yeah, or, or like 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 the 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 character like the writing was trying too hard to like you know who wrote it right before yeah. you go too far. Yes. All right, okay, I know, but, okay. but but that that sorted itself out in the next couple episodes, and right. um, I think I think it like it really starts to kick off on in episode three, like that's when they really start to get to the like you know the first... that's that's the anime rule right if you can't hook you by an, episode three you get out correct, right. correct. okay yeah. And because like the first two episodes is hey here's this group of adventurers, you know they're down bad, yeah. And then and then <clears throat> how did I know that? Because they're <laughs> always down bad. <laughs> yeah, they're always down bad. Um, and it's kind of like, just like an introduction to the group and and the theme and style of the story. The animations though are fantastic. Love the animation. They better be for twenty two million dollars. Plus a little bit of whatever Amazon has kicked in, like that. What the twenty million was Amazon? It was like two million from the people, and then Amazon okay. was like, "We want exclusive rights to season one and two. Here's yeah. twenty million dollars." Sure. Yeah. <laughs> Here's twenty million dollars. That's what uh, happened. Yeah, I, I mean, I know, I know. <sighs> but um, yeah, that's been uh, that's pretty much been my week. It's been 
doing that watching watching shows man all right hold on a second my mathematical knowledge is noticing that james has subscribed for 36 straight months which means that this is three years so we must have met in january of 19. I, I was subscribed previously and then my credit card changed i lost i lost a month where i did longer than three years it's hard for me to remember time anymore when i started streaming i had a pretty good grasp on how long it's been since my last campaign and now i'm just like winter's edge what was that like six months six years yeah 2018 is <sighs> when i left bosch and i was still playing with you when i was at bosch because i was wow. it was hard, it was harder to sneak out uh, uh, during the work day back in those days <laughs> incredible is this a real or fake page crease on this map <laughs> i screwed us that so um it, it it's not it's not a not a folded map which has been scanned in the book it's printed flat with the page uh, crease yes. oh now i remember so, you guys saying that yeah that's right yeah a lot, how do lot, i a move the bell oh, here we go yeah yes good 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 all right where were we we had wrapped up spoon correct yep yeah all right james why don't you tell us about how you've been Ah, uh, look. So, so I mean, that's a real me. name. I went down to a, a, a gaming convention last weekend down in um, in Canberra. Jealous. Uh, took took my two eldest sons down um, so they could play some D and D. So we had uh, a, a game on the Saturday, which was my, myself and my two kids plus another kid. So the GM there, it, we're playing Adventurers League, um, and the GM really obviously played to the kids, which was fine. That's what they were, we were there for. Um, so they had a really good time, although. They're currently, I think it's called The Wild Behind the Witchlight or something, is the current series where every single module has to be written in such a way that it's possible to do the module with no combat. Um, which we did in that first adventure. Like we got through the whole module with no combat. And I think that, you know, the kids have just got their first characters. They're wanting to sort of, you know, get out there and, and run around them and hit things. So look, that, they had fun, but they probably weren't as engaged as they were when I ran a game for them the previous weekend at home. Uh, and then we went back on the Sunday and played another session where it was myself, my three kids, and then two other adults, where the GM needed to sort of try and play to both the kids and the adults. It wasn't as engaging for my youngest son, um, who's he's my autistic child as well. He probably, he spent a lot of time doing the old game where you roll all your dice until you get the highest number and put it aside and keep going until you've got the highest number in every dice, you know, that's a, a typical board gamer activity. Um, he, he's had a good time though, and we had a fight at that, that adventure as well, so... Um, and once again, like, like, I don't think that the other players were disturbed by having kids at the table. I, I've certainly run games at cons where you see people turn up and then you see a group of kids walk in to play the game and they're like, oh, God, okay, now we can't swear or do anything fun. But no, these guys are really good as well. So, um, yeah, look, it was great for them. And, and we spent stupid amounts of money on Pokemon cards, my kids as well. I, I bought a whole bunch of hard to find 40K kids. So I managed to get myself a, a couple of Defilers for my Chaos Armies and found, uh, Imperial Fist upgrade packs so that's really been it i mean i've just been yeah work has been kicking my ass um i was telling arthur there was a, a one of our offices got flooded on friday because of heavy rain in melbourne um i'm heading down to melbourne next weekend to, to try and sort some crap out down there but i'll still be here for streaming on the saturday and don't worry about that yeah that's really been my life back to work and a bit of gaming playing divinity original sim with arthur Divi sorry original sin 2 true and at some point we'll have to get the total war warhammer game back underway just looking at this map it's crazy so crazy <laughs> all right james why don't you tell us what we're doing tonight uh so well so what i i'll just for everyone else's background what i said to the guys when we knew we couldn't play a game tonight so i'm happy to run something else either as a one shot or a short series maybe have something ready for when henley drops out from time to time because it's going to be there's a new new parents can happen a bit um and so i said i'm really 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 like taken with foundry so i went through all the foundry games that i had the settings for and said okay choose from these we narrowed it down to four i i i, I narrowed that down to two i built material for two of those and then this morning my time i was like hey how about the other one this other one so <laughs> uh the other one was um Wifrit, the old Warhammer Fantasy roleplay fourth edition from um, now from Cubicle 7. And, and I had a look and they have a, a an expensive but an awesome foundry module that has you know everything, including character creation built into the actual foundry client. Um so it was and, and what's more, they have the whole um 
uh, Enemy Within campaign. Uh, so Enemy Within is a, a campaign written in the late 80s for Wifrit that is regarded as one of the best role-playing campaigns of all time, not just in this setting, but in, in a lot of fantasy settings. Uh, and so it's easy, okay, all the, all the maps are there, all the NPCs there, all the arts there. Um, I think it was 22 euros to get it loaded in, so done. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to go through character creation, which is half the fun. Um, and then we're going to, uh, we'll play a little bit, which is the other half of the fun. And, and then if the guys like it, and there's future occasions where, um, you know, other people are missing, it's there as a backup game. Um, yeah. Make sense? Sounds good. It does. I just want to be clear, though, <clears throat> that my initial uh, choice did not include Warhammer Fantasy, but... Spoon said he wanted it, and Connor Hughes is like, yeah, man, I've been trying to get you to play Warhammer Fantasy for years. I didn't flip-flop, I just added it to the list because my friends were interested in playing it, okay? I just want to make sure that that's understood. I'm not a waffler. I like pancakes. <laughs> it, it, it's no, no bother. I've, I've got a bunch of games ready to go for future. In fact, one of them is really just using a foundry module I'd run before in D&D &D and clear it out so it's ready for a new group again. That was it. All right. So. Let me... I got to resize. Oh, God. Whatever I've touched is not the thing I wanted to work with. Well, while right. Arthur's fixing things, if for, for the audience's sake, if you're not familiar with Warhammer Fantasy Roleplay, it is worse. clearly set in the Warhammer... Uh, not Age of Sigma, the old world Warhammer from Games Workshop, uh, which has now been destroyed in their in their um, setting. But the role play game uh, is still popular in the old world, and so they have two versions. They've got this one, and they've got um, Age of Sigma Soulbound, which is set in the new setting. But um, this old setting, which is get used for games like Vermintide and Total War Warhammer, uh, is still a hugely popular setting. Uh, and and this game is set in Reichland which is uh, a very German-inspired uh, empire um, in, uh, in the former setting. Are you good, Arthur? Did you get your shit sorted out? I did. I know it's surprising. All right, nice. Right. Um, now, I, I ran through character creation this, but I don't know how it works from a player point of view without GM controls, and I don't know how it works when two people turn it at once. Like, I can see that Arthur has done, started character creation. Uh, so you should be able to go start, like... like uh, I lack permissions, so, so it's trying to roast me. So what did it say for you? Did it give you... Um, My role was 24. I am a human Reichlander. Before, before you run off, yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me explain. Um, so as you might have gleaned, yeah, the first part is splitting species. So I, I told Arthur this, but Spoon, for your benefit, the way this character creation system works is that you are rewarded for taking random options, but you can still do selected options. So for example, in species, mm -hmm. you may either choose a species or you can roll. And if you roll you and, and you take what you rolled, you get uh, to add 20 XP at the start of the game. And then there'll be more things you get to add more XP as well. Okay. So now, now, now humans are one to 90 on a D hundred. Mm -hmm. So, um, and yeah, like, uh, like <clears throat> there's a 4% chance of a halfling uh, three of a dwarf and two of an elf. Okay. So, uh, um, so I should ask the question: Did mm -hmm. you want it? Did you want something specific, or uh, are you happy to roll? I am. I am happy to roll for my species. Okay. So, Arthur's still just streaming here without waiting for me to tell him what to do. Uh, so did you? Wait, whoa, 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 James! Did you want me to wait, or? Yeah, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you when to okay. push the appropriate button because okay. you can get All into right. some trouble if you don't. I'm also going to be a Reichlander. All right, so as you can see, there, it, it has spat you out a bunch of rolled stats. Mm -hmm. So um, with Reichlanders, thankfully, uh, it's because it's, it wasn't easy to see it. All their stats are equal to 2d10 plus, uh, plus 20. So, um, so it's it really only worried about the weapon skill down to fellowship because the rest are derived stats. Um, so you can either take the stat set you've been given, and, and it will be adjusted by your class as well. Um, or if you want to, you can uh, take minus 25 XP, which will put you into negative um, if you're at zero currently you're only at 20, to move them around. So take those numbers and swap them around. Or 50 XP to completely either re-roll or just spend 100 points across the stats. 
Just in case you can't see it, audience, I don't know how big it is. Spoon has somehow juiced his agility to become Sonic the Hedgehog. <laughs> I'm also super smart. Yeah, I'm just better at fighting than you. Just yeah, barely, and I'm you're pretty... better in every other category. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, how do I drag this card onto your sheet? How do I do that? So, so you haven't got a sheet yet, is that right? That sounds right to me. Okay, so I'm going to do. I'm going to create you both a sheet. Okay. So I'm going to put a AP character. Yeah, because I'm I'm pr I'm pretty okay with these stats. I think I've done fairly well for myself here. So AP, you should have an AP character there now. True. Question is, how do I drag? Uh, uh, so you're going to drag the stats. You'll have to type the stats into, into the initial box. No, that's fine. Yeah, so permission spoon will be owner. Yeah, you should have a spoon character there now, spoon. Okay. Yes, my ballistic skill is 27,000. Not 15, that's 25. Strength is 34. Look at Arthur's toughness, 3,000 to 20. <laughs> no, that sounds yeah. right. Because he is a uh, worshiper of the dark gods. They have granted him. <clears throat> By the way, my name is Ludger Barrel Rider. Okay. Ludger, of course, means liar in German, which goes perfectly with the idea that I floated to James earlier. So if you put human, you put human in a species and put male or female in as your gender, and once those two things are done, you can click on where it says details in your um, uh, on your attribute sheet, and it should generate you some other suggestions for character traits. Oh, God. Stop trying to change my name. <laughs> Take some of these other things. Wow, I'm so, I'm a fucking anime character. <laughs> I'm 16 years old. Jesus, what am I doing? Okay, <laughs> with white blonde hair. <laughs> so do I do I do I need a name before I do details or no? No, no, because no, it'll, it'll suggest you a name. You can okay. Feel free okay. to use you, and you can just if you don't like you just keep reading details and. It'll just roll, re roll another set of random, random stats. Oh, great GM who controls my ability to move forward. What shall I do next? Okay. So if you hit where it says skills and talents uh, on the, on the attributes generated part for your, for your character. I've done so. Okay. So first I was going to show you a bunch of skills. Um, if you go to the skills tab on your sheet. So what you want to do is any skill that's in that list which doesn't already appear in your skills list, drag it onto your sheet. Oh, it already appeared. If you end up with the same skill twice, you, you can delete the, the duplicate yeah. skill. Michael Gossip, I've got those. Evaluate okay. sounds good. So what if I already have the skills? Oh, sorry. I'm a, sorry. Let me, let me, I, I realize. Sorry, you're only, you're only dragging across a maximum of six skills you don't have. Yes. Yeah. I've only dragged over two. I don't have a lot of... I, I already have a lot of these skills, I think. Yeah, that's it. So if you've already got that's fine. It, it's, it's, you, can bring up, you can bring across up to six skills you don't already have. Uh, so I don't think I have melee basic. I'll take that. That does sound like a good idea. Oh, I guess I have melee already. What's the? Is there a difference between melee basic and melee? Uh, I don't believe so. No. Okay. So. This is a skill called row. <laughs> this is like when uh, three point five had like uh, two different stealth and two different uh, perception skills. All right. And so, so you've also got a bunch of talents at the bottom there. 
So the, they, all humans get doomed and either savvy or suave. And then you, then you get three random talents. You can't change those. So go to the talents tab and just drag doomed across, drag either your choice of savvy or suave. You want to whoa, whoa, whoa. What's doomed do? So doomed means that um, all, all people in the empire, when they're born, a doomsayer comes to their parents' home and predicts how that person will die. Mm. Um, and so your idea is with the doom trait, you work out with the GM what prediction was made about your death when you were a baby. And if you're playing a long campaign, if your character dies in a way that fulfills that prophecy, you get extra XP for your next character. <laughs> uh, okay. I got the same talent twice. Uh, yeah, so Me. you can... Uh, how, do you, how would you re-roll that? Um, okay, so just hitting... If you hit where it says you may re-roll, it will just generate an extra talent roll at the bottom of the screen. All right. Okay, that's the same talent I already have. That's the same talent I already have. Uh, yeah, is that your one? No, you're looking at Spoon's talents, aren't you? Oh, am I? Oh, yeah. you're correct. I am looking at Spoon's talents. All right, so let me remove some. So I didn't get flee. Instead, I got read, write... Which is good because I can speak Bretonian, so now I guess I can write Bretonian. So where are you at, Spoon? Have you got your skills? Uh, I'm, I'm I'm still picking skills. I'm three out of three out of six so far. I took uh, ranged bow. Um, By the way, it's eight. Lord Ludger Barrel Rider now. <laughs> oh, oh, okay, I, I I think I also have noble blood. <clears throat> Uh, animal care. Let's see. So I took range bow, animal care, evaluate. Uh, I think I'm going to take language Bretonian. I don't know. The, yeah, I, I say the, the, the thing is, is I, is I already have a lot of these skills. Yeah. Um, so if you try to do your um, or your talents cross Arthur. Yep, uh, and you can actually. You, I think you can click on them to see what they actually do in your sheet as well. Yep, I already did it. Yeah, that's it. Okay, so now if you go back up to your stat sheet, you'll see there is a career button. So hit career once. Rat catcher. Okay, so. Uh, what class? What career it is? It didn't tell me what my class is. It just tells me the skills. Yeah, no, try it. Try, I'm going to delete that one. Try hitting that one again. Oh, no, I'm a runner. runner. There it is. There okay, runner. Okay cool. okay, cool. So your options are you can either select, keep runner and you get 50 XP, or you can generate two more and then choose one of those three and you get 25 XP, or choose any career for, and get zero XP. AP, did you go savvy or suave? I went suave. It's important because my character is a liar. I, I will choose the opposite then. <laughs> so you're good at seeing through my bullshit. <laughs> yeah. um, right, so the, these other three that are grayed out. On you, my... you, still, you still take those. You've got flea twice, though. So you're going to hit the where it says you may reroll any duplicate talent to reroll one of your fleas. Okay. Something else. And, and I still drag these over onto my sheet. Yes, right? you do. Okay. Yeah, that's right. So flea and noble blood. Oh, a noble messenger. Am I like a herald then? I'm a member of the oh, Postal pure, Service. Oh my God, pure soul. Okay. What is that? It means that you you don't get corruption as fast. Yeah, I'm son uh, of a bitch. My soul is pure, quite resistant to the depredations of chaos. So, how do you feel about messenger AP? I'm I'm working my way through it. I'm trying to figure out how a noble would be a messenger, and I'm thinking like some sort of herald. So remember this: the difference between noble, noble blooded, and being a noble. That's true. Yeah. Hmm. You could be from a family that fell in hard times. You could be an outcast from your family. Well, it says you are born into the nobility, so I am a noble. Yeah. Hmm. I got dark hand for mine. So your options are then, as I said, if you, you may either 
um, accept dock hand, um, or you may uh, roll two more and choose from one of those three and you'll get less XP, or you can then choose any, any one if you don't like any of those three. Okay. So you'll get no XP for it. Uh, so I will go ahead and uh, roll two more. Okay, so go back. So just so hit, hit re-roll career twice. Okay, I would like to re-roll, but you deleted my re-roll ability, so. Okay, um, you can you do. Let me just go back up to the top. And do career, that's right, yeah. And I'll yeah, so the reason I'm doing it is because my stats are terrible for that class. Okay, okay so let's see here. You got Hexer or Tollkeeper. It, so. it, well, I, I got like a bunch of different ones. Um. Oh, did it? It must have rolled. It must have rolled. Yeah, because I because okay. I got I got yeah. So I got student, oh, okay. student, and and recruit are the first two after okay, after cool. dock All hand. Right. All right, so I'll piss off the rest then. Landsman and initiate. God, everything revolves around having agility, which I don't have. Uh, no, what they they don't rely on any having that. They they boost it basically is what it's saying. They they're the stats that it will put up. Holy visions! Uh, I think I'll take recruit. Okay, so with with the the under, under where it's got the picture, it's got the book that brings up the stats for it. Uh huh. Um, you when you scroll down, you'll see that there's a, it'll say that the advanced scheme that will have. Uh, one and then what a level one of that is called. Mm -hmm. um, so then what you do is on your, on your main screen of your character sheet, down where, down where it has career, drag that first class into the career box. Okay, so drag recruit over to career. Okay, got and it. Then, and then click, click, click where it says current. Okay. Okay, so it's populated now, things like your warrior class, social career group, soldier, current career recruit, civil one status. Um, okay, so you've got that much. And also, if you look now um, on your skill sheet, next to each of the skills that are listed for that, that career, you should see ah. the plus as well. Yep, yep. yep. Okay. So, I'm not seeing all that, oh, James. So, okay, hang on. Because my career is me like melee. Okay, hang on. And, uh, me melee is different from melee basic because... It's um, the melee skill represents specific to training with a single type of close combat weapon. Huh. Okay. Hang on. I'm going to switch some of my skills then. All right. So, AP, where, where are you stuck with? I'm trying to drag priest over, and it's okay. So, so not priest. If you click, if you click on the um, little book icon below priest. And it'll bring up the priest package. Yep. And you'll see that level one is initiate. Yes. So drag the word initiate to your career box. Uh, to my career box. There it is. Current. Yeah. Ooh. Right. Has that updated my skills? Do I need to do anything else? Okay. So now, well, wait, 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 wait till Spoon fixed up your skills and we'll go on the next uh, one. I'm, I'm good. I, I just got, I got rid of one of my language skills and took uh, melee basic as a skill. Okay. So I'm just, also we're just going to date your experience points. So, so Arthur, you roll. I went race. random and I reroll career once for 25. So you're, so you're at 45 XP currently. That's interesting. So. That gives me the ability to change your XP. Would you end up in uh, spin? Uh, recruit, so soldier. I'm just your local lying priest. I was, I was, I was very tempted to go student because um, Felix Jaeger uh, began his life as a student at Alt, at the University of Altdorf. I don't know who that is. Uh, he is a character in the Warhammer Fantasy world. Uh, he travels with Gotrick Gernison who is a dwarf slayer. I just want to tell you, a dwarf slayer? 
no, 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 no. Dwarf. A dwarf. Slayer. Okay. A slayer. Uh, I was gonna say that was pretty bad. <laughs> Is he a traitor? <laughs> uh, Felix Jaeger definitely sounds like a Attack on Titan name for like a side character. Sure. Um. Okay, so um, first off, you get to now allocate some characters some advances. So you have a total of five advances for free. Um, so it says, look, advance can find the three. Okay, so on your sheet, if you look at your character six page, you should have a plus next to three of your stats. So for example, Arthur, you've got toughness, agility, willpower. Spoon, yes. you've got toughness, willpower, weapon skill. Yep. So you've got a total of five free points you can put into the advance column. So either put five into one or spread them around between those those three stats. Put all five in a fellowship. I'm putting all no, no, five. No, 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 it's got to be in one of the ones that's got a plus next to it. You know, fellowship. Sheesh. How is a priest bad at talking to people? She Because you lie all the time. <laughs> no, that's me. That's not a priest. All right, got to be one of these five. Well, I'll make my agility not terrible then. Yeah, I put all, I put all mine into into uh, weapon skill. All right. Um, so one thing I missed with your with your with your skills for your um, race, you can pick any three skills from your race to add plus five to. And any three skills from your race to add plus three to. And they go into the advanced column. Oh, uh, and that was that was from our from our human the human yeah, skills. Human, human skills, yes. Okay. And it's pick any pick any three for five. Yes. And then... three for five and three for three. Okay. So could we theoretically raise one by eight? Uh no, it had to be three okay. separate skills. Three separate skills, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Have you done that after with the skills? Yep. Okay. And then you've then got a total of 40 points to add to skills that have the plus. They are your career skills um, or, or, or the tick. See, so it's got like a plus or a tick. So what, what, what the tick means is that you have put enough points into that skill to, quite, to have raised it enough to be able to. So effectively, in order to go up to the next rank in your career, you have to have put all the skills up by at least five that are career-based skills. So, and the tick means that you've put enough points in that skill. So for example, Arthur, you've already put enough points into perception. You can still put more, but you don't have to. So you've now got 40 points to spend on career skills, no more than 10 into any one skill. And I think they can also go into, no, they have to be on skills. 25 for 40, I have 15 left. And and they and they have to have the the tick next to them. The, the plus or the tick. Okay. <clears throat> Turns out I'm very intuitive. I'm gonna have to rethink this liar persona as a priest. I don't know. And I'm 16 years old, but I'm already a oh, you don't have to be. You can change that. That's beginner fine. priest. No, uh, James, I let the randomness wash over me. Didn't you tell me to prepare for chaos? I'm about to give chaos a boot to the face. What system? Warhammer Fantasy, Glimo. Warhammer Fantasy. Okay, I have to, I have spent all of my points in, in skills. Yeah, let's go try and find so I'm just dropping your um your trappings into your sheet. So we have a dagger. Dagger, dagger, dagger. Leather breastplate. Pennies, shillings, and crowns. Yep. Was this system perhaps written by the English? <laughs> 
here in God's America, we use <laughs> copper, God, silver, and copper. Yeah. Yeah. It, it, it even it even uses the British measurements of twenty shillings to one gold. Oh God, 12, twelve pennies to one shilling. I don't want to hear again about Europeans <laughs> and their metric system. <laughs> Next is gonna be Harry Potter with seventeen newts to a galleon or some shit. <laughs> Uh, so clothing, I'm gonna get an angry Harry Potter fan. Wow, Glimo, 41 month streak, incredible! Thank you so much, man. Actually, I think you mean 17 sickles in a galleon. Oh my god, there it is. The angry Harry Potter fans are among us. Look at this fucking raven claw. Get out of here. And I believe it is uh 493 newts in a in a galleon. All right, Slytherins represent. Get this fucking Ravenclaw out of here. <laughs> okay, priest. All right, so Arthur needs religious symbol. And he needs robes. My religious symbol is a bobblehead of. <laughs> who's the. Who's Pondo's mom in Rogue uh, Trader? Um, uh, 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 <laughs> Angelic, yeah, Angelic, Angelic. Yeah, it's the same one that Nero has. <laughs> <clears throat> she's, uh, just, she's just dressed. No, she's probably not even dressed differently. It's still the same. <laughs> it's, it's close enough that uh... <clears throat> the emperor approves. <laughs> uh, <writing>. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's a patron saint that I saw in a dream once. Mm -hmm. Either a time long past or a time yet to come. Uh, that was what encouraged me to become a priest. Roll me 1d10, Alpha. Great. 1d10. I know you know I'm good at rolling, which is why I'm about to put an 8 on this board. 5. You have yeah. 5 pieces of paper in your equipment. Excellent. Okay. So, um... What am I going to do with the other 4 after I make the paper airplane? <laughs> okay, so Spoon, you are a silver 1 status. Which means you have one d ten silver shillings. Oh, fantastic! <clears throat> I'm the noble. Oh, you're also a noble. I was gonna I'm say I'm the noble, and I rate below you as a brasser. Okay, and uh, AP, you are a brass two, so you have four d ten brass pennies. There's that eight. Twenty five brass pennies. That's not bad. That's slightly above average. And, it, and it's and it's when it's one more penny than Spoon has. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's going to go two shillings and one one penny. Excellent. <laughs> so it's twelve pennies to a shilling. Yes. All right. Uh, uh, yes. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And then 20, 20 shillings to a crown. So what is a half pence? So uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, they're, 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 that's a that's a British thing, but a half pence is literally half a penny. It's worth half a penny. So two half pence is worth with worth a penny. In, 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 I'm out here just trying to get old, some hot cross buns, y'all. Yeah. Uh, and then you've also got like thruppets, tuppets. <laughs> oh my uh, god. <laughs> Next, you're going to tell me about how there's a word for the day after tomorrow. <laughs> um, the only thing I'm trying to do is actually give you, award you XP because I can see, I can. Like I, I can get, you can go back up to your find one of your things that's career advancements. It's XP twenty five. You can click on the XP twenty five. It will add that twenty five to your sheet. But I'm just trying to try out how to add the twenty for your for your race because I can't just edit it like like a schmo. So, so you're saying we should go up and, and click? Yeah. The... If, if you find where, where it's got your um one of your careers and it has the um thing which says uh career advancement mm -hmm. one says xp50 one you want to say one says xp25 and click on that where it says xp25 okay and it will actually add 25 xp to you let's do that where do we see xp yeah i was say I, I don't know uh, it's, 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 it's on the on your front page on the main page of your sheet it hasn't added it below uh, right above where your career is but i can't offer it even though i hit it one time that's weird okay Well, that's it. We should just uh, stop playing. Obviously, it's broken. <laughs> I can edit how much is spent. I can edit how much you have. So, 
So, I mean, it should work still. So, you, so you, you've got your track on paper, right? You've got 45 XP. So if you mouse over um, where the, um, the pluses are on your stats or on your skills, it'll tell you how much XP it costs to raise that thing by one. And then we have how much right now? 45? 45. So and, and if we mouse over the the like the check mark. Yeah, that's fine. You can still spend XP on this on that thing. Okay. But what 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 if there isn't like a plus or a then you, you can't put it up with these XP. Gotcha. Okay. Okay, it's just put your negative, negative XP, but I can make a way how to fix that later on. If, if, there if, we if, go. If, if we even enjoy the game. I have negative XP according to this, but... That's right. That's, that's... Uh, I can't spend the other 15 because it costs too much. Or sorry, uh, you said 45? I can't spend the other 20. That's fine. We know I have it. Yeah. So on, on your trappings page, you should all have gear now I put in there so you can equip items, for example, or wear items. Now, do I have fortune, resolve, or resilience greater than zero at any point? Uh, so your fortune should be equal to your fate, which is two. So I'll, I'll put your fortune to two. Uh, what's initial resolve and resilience equal to? Okay, so determining resolve and okay, so in the attributes table. Okay, so humans start with one resilience. So did you did you put the two fate on Arthur or was that already I put the two fate on annually? Yeah, and then fortune is equal to yeah, fortune equals your fate, resolve equals resilience. Okay, so you should each have two fortune, two fate, one resilience. So, so the way those work in the system, it's like fate points in uh, Rogue Trader. So effectively, your fortune are the points you can spend um, to just up roll. So you can either do a re-roll to um, uh, uh, add, add, uh, add do, do degree of success to a roll, go first initiative, et cetera. Fate points are the ones you spend permanently to do things like survive against all odds. Um, resolve points and uh, resilience points are a bit different. So resolve points you use to do things like uh, overcome conditions, like being frightened uh, or being knocked prone. Um, you can also use it to avoid things like mental um, effects. So like uh, ignore uh, wound penalties, ignore um, uh, madness for a turn. And then resilience, you can uh, spend a permanent point of resilience when you would gain a mutation to not gain a mutation, or you can spend a permanent point to decide before you roll what the result of your dice roll will be. So if there's something you really, really want to do, you can say, I just want to roll a one. Not die. Nice. Yeah, well, it's going to be something you're rolling for. So fate is what you would use to just not die. Resilience is like, I, you know, I need to land a killing blow right now. I need a critical hit. So therefore, I'm going to, I'm going to burn a point of resilience. Is there a way to regain or just gain yeah, more yeah, resilience? So, so they could, they could, they all have mechanics of being regained, but they're much, much harder. So to get like fate and resilience. So with fate, for example, it's only when you've done something which is, you know, you, you've completed a major um, story arc or, you know, achieved some great heroic thing. Um, resilience is for more things like, um, it's, it's more about, about personal development. So you've achieved some great goal in your life. Um, or uh, you know, have, have put your father's spirit to rest, or something like, along those lines. When it, uh, it's, it's up to the player in the gym to determine what might what actually drive those. So I'm pretty sure we've got two made characters. Um, so on, on uh, and under talents, I have several that are grayed out. That yes, I... so so those are ones that you can buy with XP, but uh, they cost gotcha. 200 XP. Okay, so so that's for like later on when yeah, we've right. earned earned enough XP. Yeah. Um, I oh okay so so how much total XP did we have? 
Forty-five. Okay. Oh, how how do you get forty-five points in there? Uh, I just typed forty-five in the total. Okay, let's try that for the work for Arthur. Like I I couldn't change the current madness. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> this dark power <laughs> but uh, spoon's I, a crazy man but i was just like okay well i can change the spent and i can change the total so it it stands to reason he solved for x yeah can you even do that okay yeah and i, and I can spend it and let's see if that automatically yep and it so it automatically spends unbelievable it does amazing that's math, guys. Yeah. Algebraic. Uh, excuse me. This is the empire. It's math. Maths. Oh, maths. sorry. <laughs> I forgot. <laughs> Only America does that. My apology, people who say maths. Instead of saying you're in the hospital, you just say, I'm in hospital. Yeah. Are the carts on the left or right side of the road? Just to be clear. Before I... <laughs> Just kidding. I'm a noble. I take the center of the road. Yeah. Hey, hey, look. When I when I when I'm typing all my stuff for Rogue Trader, I use British spelling because it's a British game. When I was putting in notes for L5R for you guys, I was specifically using American spelling because that's what the game's published in. When I spell honor or color for British people, I always include the U and sometimes an E at the end. So, so my wife and I observed recently that you know how when there's a news article about when like a country spent a big amount of money or anyone's been fined an amount. If I ever look at, if I'm ever somewhere that's not America and they're talking about something that happened in America, they'll say such and such received a fine for 50 US dollars in brackets, however that much is in Australia, you know, or it'll always be whatever, whatever the, they'll talk about the currency in the place first, and then they'll give you in brackets what that is in your currency. Whereas when I look at American news, it's talking about like things happening over, because like, I saw an American article about a fine levied against someone in Australia. They, they referred to the fine, it was like, oh, it was 2,361 US dollars in brackets, Four thousand Australian dollars. So, you know, it, it, it's a uh, it's the opposite opposite way around in America. It seems they always have to. You know, I got a currency comes first. I got a Google Chrome extension that makes all the news articles also include what that money would be in Norwegian kroner, which is one of the easiest currencies to translate money between. <laughs> Just getting into character for old Ludger barrel writer. Can, can you get an extension to calculate it in monkey NFTs? <laughs> I don't understand, James. You can't. It's it, they're worthless, so you can't move the money around without losing value. That's right. <clears throat> that would imply fungibility. Oh my god! I'm about to show you how fungible an NFT is. <laughs> <laughs> pretty fungible. <laughs> so I mean, the, the system should be pretty straightforward for you guys because it's basically the road trader system. Effectively, you know, you would just. Click, give it a try, click on a skill, um, and uh, assuming that nothing else is required, just hit roll. And it should instantly bring up your um, your result. There you go, look at that. So AP rolled. We rolled melee basic. We both uh, rolled for weapons. Amazing. <laughs> yep. I fumbled hitting somebody in the left leg. That's classic. <laughs> I got a mar marginal success in the body. <laughs> Hey, at least at least your failure was impressive, Arthur. I know. James, did you ever watch Roleplay Dark Heresy? No. I mean... Oh my god. You don't know about the leg. <laughs> oh, you're missing out. It's all right. I do I do if you work out the mechanics of how the, the hit system in these works is it does push most hits towards the legs. So <sighs> Yeah, we just, I just assume all, all 40k worlds have high gravity. So all your blows are like directed down towards the leg. Yeah. 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 You think you would adjust for that though, right? Like you would become strong enough to overcome that downward drag. Look, man, when you when you work against the sword, it becomes heavier after every All right, <laughs> calm down. <laughs> you know, I felt like it was too mystical for me. I know it's Star Wars, but that seemed a little out of place. <laughs> I'm just saying. So, so let's say, so Arthur, who are you? Ah. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm glad you asked. I'm uh, Ludger Bellrider. Uh, after I had uh, a vision 
uh and of course my doom saying i uh i chose to become uh, a priest you know i'm i'm working my way through the priesthood i really feel like we could have a, a clean house leads to a clean mind i feel like if i could just rise through the system from the inside i could help more people you know, I could help more people with the with the Ludgar system. So, you know, I, I know I'm at the bottom of the barrel right now, but one day they're going to be saying Ludger the Lecter. That's something they're going to say. Uh, are you a priest of Sigma or one of, uh, like, did you want to be a priest of a, of a more specific? No, no, no. Let's say Sigmar Sigmar is the only human god I know. So let's say Sigmar. <laughs> Uh, what about Please. you, Spoon? Uh, I am Dirk Einbecker, uh, the third son of House Einbecker, and as such, I've decided to enlist in the state regiments of Reichland. Okay. Is that a regiment of renown? Uh, it is not. It is. Uh, <laughs> they are state troops who serve the Count of Reichland. It's just, just, just play. So the Count of Reichland is just the emperor. <laughs> so. I mean. Most of the time, yes. Currently, also yes. But uh, I mean, it could be it could be an elector count. Yeah. Current elector count, also still emperor. <laughs> yeah, still emperor. Yeah, I mean, you know. Look, it just so happens that the emperor is also the count of Reichland. So I want to ask you both a question. So, so what would be the reason that each of you, either individually or together? Uh, on the way to Altdorf. I'm on my way up in the world. I'm looking to raise my status so that the Ludger method can uh, can spread and protect more people from the reaches of chaos. You know, he's got a very Marie Kondo. If you clean your house, you clean your mind, and that, that leads to a clean body and a clean soul. We're really hanging on to too much. Clinging to things is how chaos enters our life. It has not been well received so far. A lot of people like having their stuff. So, <laughs> you know, he's trying, he's moving to a new place. He's trying a new thing. And Altdorf is really the center of the empire and therefore the center of the world. Forget any place that has the word Karak in front of it. <laughs> Uh, I think Dirk would be on his way to Altdorf, maybe like on leave. He's he's gotten uh, his his you know weekly pay or something, and has has gotten a couple couple of days to leave, and he's headed to the capital. I mean, so the from where we start off, the capital is still over hundred miles away. Okay. So it, it might it might be, it might be a, a like a leave of absence after a battle or something like that. Maybe sure. a little longer than a few days. But uh... yeah, yeah, yeah. What well, if he's going to be assigned to his new unit? There you go. That's Transferring, good. sure, to a new command. Okay, no worries. Um, so look, the roads through um, Reichland are uh, not bad. You know, it, it's it's typical feudal English German countryside, um, dirt roads, small towns, lots of peasants, um, lots of rain as well. Uh, you know, the, the, the weather is generally un unpleasant. And it's very rare that you can get a carriage which takes you all the way from point A to point B. Invariably, you end up having to go to sort of like carriage stops. Local airports, try, yeah. Yeah, and then try and pick up the next, the next carriage to the next part of your, uh, part of your destination. Um, so as we open, you're still you know, well over 100 miles from Outdorf. And your, uh, your current carriage is, uh, is bringing you to a, a, a carriage stop known as the, the Coach and Horse Inn. Um, they basically, this carriage is going to drop you off, basically turn around and head back the other direction. Uh, and, and in fact, you're arriving at, you're arriving later than you expected. There was some, some bad weather, the road had turned to mud. Uh, in fact, probably at some point, uh, if Spoon here a bit stronger, they might have had to like stop and get you to help, like lift the wheels out of the mud as well in the rain. Um, but in any case, the, the carriage drivers for your carriage aren't playing to stay the night here. So they're like wanting to just basically dump you on the side of the road um, and turn around and head back to try and get back to wherever they're going before it gets too late and anything untoward might be out in the night. So it's like the early stages of dusk when um, you are, uh, you're pulled up to this, uh, 
this in. In fact, what I can probably do is I'm going to the oh, crash that wrong. Why can't I find what I'm looking for? Location horse in. I might need to make it so that you can see it. Yeah, I didn't. We don't have vision because we don't have don't tokens. Own any, yeah, don't own any tokens. You'll just have to remove Flag of War. Does that, does that work? Yep. Yep. Let me get that to the people. Yeah. Oh, look at that. It's all so very involved. Mm -hmm. so I'll tell you what, Game Master, I'm going to get out of the, the carriage. And I'm going to go to the coachman and I'm going to say... Thank you so much for your hard work, gentlemen. Here is, you know, the agreed upon second half of the payment. Clean living leads to a clean life. Blessings of Sigmar upon you. Yeah, right, go with God. Thank you, sir. Right. And they're, they're like or, already like wheeling the horse around. Uh, like, in fact, one of them's like moved a blunderbuss onto the seat beside him just in case they, you know, facing it in the night out there. Be safe. Right, they, uh, you, you may just barely step away as like the wheel kicks up mud as, as they, they, they rapidly turn the um, uh, the, ca the carriage and, and pretty much gallop off. Like it would be uncomfortable to be in that carriage right now, being bounced yeah. about it. Yeah. Greetings. I'm sorry I didn't catch your name, companion. Uh, Dirk Einbecker of House Einbecker. Lord. I also have noble heritage, but I'm truly called in my service to Sigmar. You seem house. like you too. You also. You have the look of a soldier about you. Uh, and I think Dirk is probably actually wearing his like uh, white and red Reichland uniform. What a joy. What a joy to have such a seasoned and holy warrior among us. Truly, Sigmar's blessings reign upon the Emperor. Shall we go see if there are any rooms available? I am deeply concerned about the structural integrity of those chimneys. Perhaps we should find another inn which is not decrepit. I mean, you're pretty much in like this, yeah. this, this there's, there's, there's like the roadhouse and there's maybe like a couple of houses nearby to the people that live. Here's the thing though. His whole thing is an uncluttered life, and this place is a nightmare for him. <laughs> He's thinking about some open stars. <laughs> he looks, he doesn't have a bedroll, so he says, Yeah. Okay. Well, you're you're welcome to, to uh, try your luck with the beast of the Reichwald, but for me, I'll be staying in the inn. Have you ever heard of the Ludger method? He says as he starts walking into the coach and horses. <laughs> Um, so the, the place inside, it, it's bright and it's cheerful. You know, there's there's talk, there's you know a, a bard playing um, some music in the corner. You know, this, the food smells good coming from the kitchens. Um, you can see that. So th there was also another coach parked out the front, which is probably you know a coach which goes on to other parts of the world. Uh, and and the, most of the noise is coming from the, what looked like the coachman sitting at a table with like each with a picture of Al in front of them, both having a grand time laughing and drinking and joking. Um, probably some other key people you see in the, the bar that, that draw your attention. There's a woman who is clearly dressed in the style of a, of a noble, um, like well-appointed, rich gown, uh, looking around at everybody else in the room like they are so far beneath her that it physically pains her to be in so... Um, rural a place. Um, she's sitting with two other women, one of which you could probably guess is like a maid, like a hand servant. And the other one is, is more impressively built, probably some sort of bodyguard. Um, there's um, a young man uh, sitting at a table in the corner, hugely engrossed in a book. Uh, there is a, a, a foppish looking gentleman, probably you'd guess by his style, maybe a Bretonian who is um, leaning against the bar, sort of watching everybody in the, in the bar. He, sort of like, he looks up and gives you sort of like a, just a, a nod of greeting from across the room when he sees you. Uh, there's a man behind the bar serving drinks and 
there's a plump uh probably you guess landlord um walking straight towards you now you come in the door he's sort of uh you know he, he's he's nicely dressed insofar as a peasant can buy nice clothes and dress up um but it's really probably just you know he's he's working a peasant because he owns, he owns a, a public house but he's no by no means a noble he's like, oh, Hello. greetings welcome Hello. to the uh court, coach and horses would you like a seat this is uh there's one by the fire have a night it's nice and warm do you need drinks or food yes yes of course uh, drinks first how foolish of me um will you be uh staying the night indeed just water thank you and i will also be staying the night i'll take an ale yeah. there, 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 you notice at this point as well there's a raven in the rafters of the bar room hopping about between the rafters that is like echoing the last couple of words that the uh, the landlord says, uh, it, or, or like like failing to echo them. Like clearly, it's not really a talking bird, or it's, it, it's not very good at it. So, but it, it seems to be abided by everybody in the room anyway. Now, hold on. Do, do ravens have the same connotation as like bad omens and evil? Um, I, I'd say that they like any like any black animal. They would probably be considered ill omen. Like the same well, as black cats, you know. But. Yeah, I, I believe uh, if my Warhammer fantasy knowledge serves me correctly, a raven is associated with the god of death more. I think. Yeah. So I, I say it's a crow, the raven. So a crow. A crow. Yeah. But still, I mean, I'd say a black bird still has negative, negative overall negative connotations. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, what is your name, Air Landlord? Ah, Gustav. I am the uh, the owner of this fine establishment. A pleasure to meet you, Gustav. Where is you, uh, you gentlemen, are headed to? While this is happening, Ludger is heading over to the Raven to shoo him off. I mean, he's up in the ra- He's in the raft. Yeah, yeah, exactly. He's to- <laughs> he, like, he climbs onto a table. <laughs> <clears throat> Dirk is like, I'm headed to the capital. I've been assigned to a new regiment. How, oh, what a surprise. I'm also yeah. headed to Altdorf. He, he, he sees you like eyeing the bird too, AP. He's like, oh, that's, that's just Blackie. He's no harm. No harm. You know, a clean inn leads to clean patron. Have you ever heard of the Ludger method? No. Uh, please have a seat. Enlighten me. Can I get you? Uh, he, he, like, he signals to the man behind the bar to like bring drinks and food over. Yep. And he like, but like he doesn't sit at the table with you. He stands at the table no. where, he, where he's encouraged to sit. Please sit with us. Oh, I, I, I can't. I, I obviously I need to keep an eye for other patrons need. But please do tell me about this this Luger method of yours. Luger, yes, yes, the Luger method. Uh, it is a holy ritual one can enact upon their space. They look around themselves and think, this place is as clouded as my mind. And by removing obstructions, by taking things that no longer matter to me and eliminating them, I cleanse my soul, my mind, and my body as much as I cleanse the space. Look around yourself. What things are here that don't need to be? Obviously, there's a filthy carrion bird. But look at these can tables and chairs. Yes. When you fuse like this, do you maintain eye contact or do you spend most of the time looking to the middle distance or like gesturing towards oh there's gesturing for sure there's <laughs> strong gesturing okay i mean so so Spoon, you, you, you can probably notice that gustav is nodding but his eyes have already glazed over perfect mm-hmm. like, Got him. He's, already, he's already thinking about something else but but maintaining an atmosphere of of interest yeah he's 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 being a good uh, a good tavern keeper he's just yeah. you know Nodding at all the right moments, so probably you know, laugh in the in the right. Yeah, uh, yeah he's he's, ma- he's managed to learn your lilt, so he knows when when to nod and when to like you know go. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, I have incredibly good intuition, so I but, know uh, that he's okay, not yeah, hooked. Yes. But the, the yeah. yes, yes, go on. Yes. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> it's like in um, Wally, the um, the hairdressing robots. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. Yeah, I know, honey, I know. <laughs> Um, but I, I mean, yeah, you can probably, it, it doesn't take long to evaluate him that he, you know, is 
It's not that he's not interested. It's just that he doesn't understand what you're talking about. All right. I will stand up and clasp him on the shoulder and say, I can see that you are distracted by your station. Know that with my presence, I bring Sigmar's blessings upon this place. Go with God. Oh, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Fa father? Or? I am but a humble initiate. Just remember the Ludger method. It'll be coming back. He nods and goes off to serve somebody else. Do you mind if I sit with you, Dirk? Not at all. Is it Lord Dirk, sir? Count, perhaps? Uh, I am neither knight nor uh, lord. I am not the heir to my household. It can be a difficult life to not be a direct heir, but Sigmar looks upon all who struggle in his name. With great favor. That's why I signed up to uh, serve the Count. Have you seen any action against orcs, Norskins, vampires, perhaps? I can't say that I have. It's just your. Uh... Yeah. So, there's the publican. Gotcha. Uh, this is the man reading the book. Um, the... Okay, so does he? He actually does hold a skull while he's doing that. <laughs> so, the, uh... are skulls <laughs> as worshipped in Warhammer as they are in 40k? They are. They are. It's more common, yes, because okay. um, yeah, it, I think it, I guess it's a, a, a bit of French influence, I suppose. All right. Um, Norman, the, perhaps the noble woman. Um, the man. <sighs> It's the top beside, waifu right there. Beside, beside, beside the bar. Ah, uh, the Bretonian. The Bretonian. Yeah. yeah. We all knew instantly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, most importantly, the uh, the crow. Uh, I don't. Need, I don't get any chance to shoo this crow away in any way. I mean, look. It, if you shoot, like, it, it tends to stay wherever Gustav is. So if you shoo it, like, it, it hops around uh -huh. and like and like caws at you. Um, but once Gustav leaves, it sort of hops around the rafters and stay roughly above his head. If you will excuse me for a few moments, Dirk, I, I would like to return here to speak with you further, but uh, I see a fellow scholar here. Yes, of course. All right, I leave and I go to the Bretonian, not to the guy reading the book. <laughs> and not only do I speak Bretonian, I specialize in it, so... Oh, fantastic. I think I take a slight... Bretonian affectation, you know, I like lean against the bar instead of stand. Um, and I introduce myself and I say, Ah, yes, friend. I am Ludgar Berrider. I am a humble priest. Uh, might I have your name? I did. I am Philippe. 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 Oh, so wonderful to meet you, Philippe. Uh, Great, great blessings upon this uh, this particular public house where we find ourselves tonight, huh? Yes, uh, you look like you are a man in the know, yes? A man who is looking to get the attention of those with uh, sharp eyes. Ah, always looking for making new friends or uh, uh, hearing tales of other travels. I am not from these re uh, regions, as you can presume, and uh, you're... Your Bretonia is, is very good. Is it? I have heard that my uh, accent is... Uh, my vocabulary is diverse, but my accent sounds as if I am a uh, drunken Oscan. Ah, uh, so okay. I... Uh, yeah. <laughs> give, me, give me a, a language Bretonian role. Of course. Why wouldn't I? I'd love yeah. to. This is more about your knowledge rather than... Terrible. Absolutely <laughs> awful. <laughs> Failure. <laughs> okay. yeah. So, so, so the, the, I wasn't going to roll to to get like I'm happy. Your level is high enough that you can you can communicate without needing to roll. It was more about what you could pick up about his accent, yeah, and about him. You know, but could I? I I also speak Bretonian. Am I? Uh, they're probably they're, they're having this conversation too like too it's, far it's, away, too far away to really yeah. pick up on, gotcha. on the nuances of the language. Okay. Uh, 
Because I'm intentionally doing a bad French accent. Yeah. Just, Sorry. just to be really well, clear. Is, yeah. Is, like, it, is it is it Ipe's doing a bad French accent, or your character's? Ludger is doing a bad Bretonian accent, which manifests okay. itself through me doing a bad French okay. accent, okay. Okay. So, as sorry. if I was German. Okay. But what I, so what I mean is, is is your character deliberately trying to mangle the language? No, no. He just okay. he. His knowledge of Bretonian comes second hand, and while he has an excellent grasp of the vocabulary and knows okay. diverse and cultured words, he doesn't know how to say them to people. Okay. It's like it's like someone who's only read the word quesadilla from a book and <laughs> pronounces it quesadilla. Yes, right. exactly. It's exactly like that. It's, it's so much like a bowl. Um, what is the... onomatopoeia? <laughs> so. Uh, from experience, I know that the French hate it when you butcher their, when you butcher their language. He's not uh, he's not at all offended by your your language style at all. He's, okay. he's quite genial about it, you know. But anyway. um, could I could I join you at your table? Perhaps ah, your I don't see. No reason why not to. Uh, tell me, what have you heard about the road to uh, Altdorf? I say as I as like we're sitting down. Ah, well, I, that's, I'm heading that way myself. I, I've just uh, paid the, uh, in the case towards the, um, the, the, the two carriagemen, these fine men for uh, passage on their carriage, although I see they have already spent my fare on, on wine. Uh, but uh, the, when are they the leaving? The oh, I, I switch to uh, whatever language we speak. Yeah, okay, no worries. Um, uh, Midlander, I think that's called. Midlander, all right. I, I switch back because I don't know if he speaks Bretonian, so I feel like. Okay. Yeah, he, 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 he does speak your language. No, what I meant was for Spoon's right. sake. Spoon, for okay. Dirk's sake, we switch back to Midlander. Yeah, okay. Do you know when the carriage is leaving? Uh, yeah, it's in, in the morning. Hmm. I look at Dirk to see how he approximates that. Dirk just kind of nods, takes it in. Perhaps um, we will have to see if we can also negotiate passage. Let, let me give you some advice, my friends. Don't do not take the the first offer they give you. I appreciate that. Are they are they overcharging people? Uh, I I well. He indicates towards the noble woman present. Um, I, I, I think they, they smell money and uh, have uh, perhaps over evaluated their worth. Mm -hmm. Certainly, oh. I did not pay full price for my tickets. How long have you been at the. Uh, what was this place's name again? The Coach the and coach Horse. Coach and Horse. Yep, that's yes. It. Uh, I, I arrived last night. Uh, I was waiting for the next carriage. The, the carriages only come through roughly every four days heading towards Altdorf. He, um, mm -hmm. he, 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 he reaches in his pocket and pulls out like a pack of cards and starts to sort of like idly shuffling them. <laughs> hmm. Are you, you play cards much? Oh, I... Sometimes I uh, have been learning a, a local game. Uh, it's, uh, have you heard of what's it called? Um, Reichlin Hold'em. No, <laughs> Reichlin Hold'em. Uh, it's got a name. It's in some empire. Um, uh, uh, Scarlet, Scarlet Empress. Scarlet Empress. Which is it's it is it is a popular gambling game. Yeah, I, I would. Reichlin. Like yeah. as as a soldier, uh, Dirk is like ah yes actually I I have heard of uh, Scarlet Empress. Do you care for a game? Ah, uh, we oui. if if uh, he indicates towards uh, you Arthur, uh, would would you join us, sir? I uh, sorry, I am uh, Philippe. Dirk. Yeah. I, I indicate that I will not join this game of chance. I'm a priest, you know. It's not. Maybe if I if it was like a private back room game with my with people who weren't from my congregation, you know what I mean. But in the open, that seems wrong. Okay. I won't look down on it, but I won't participate. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna make sure that this guy that's that's here, this Bretonia, isn't cheating. By the way, I'm gonna watch him like a hawk. Okay, nurse. <laughs> I don't want to. You know, listen, I don't have anything against foreigners, but if he rips off one of our boys in uniform, <laughs> it's time to check to see how corrupt he is. Uh, okay, no worries. Um, well, uh, Spoon, could you give me a gamble roll, please? I sure could. Ooh. 53. Okay. Okay. So close. Um, wow, so you're so good at gambling. So, so, so I'm real that, smart, dude. Yeah. It, well, so, it's, it's, so what matters there is it says SL minus one. That's, that's your success level, basically. So, oh, gotcha. Okay. Um, so yeah, if it. he fails worse than I do, that's I right, could yeah. still win. Yeah, that's it. Now, um, and, and in fact, yeah, he is um, He's not <laughs> that good at this game. Uh, and, and like a couple of times, you know, it's like, you know, uh, is, is this card better than this card? You know, he, he might ask Arthur, for example um without necessarily but like in, in a way that you know indicates that he is probably not that efficient but not that not that skilled with this particular game although mm -hmm. ap give me a intuition test the thing i'm good uh, he's, at he's he's sharking me he's lulling me into a false sense of security yes i finally succeeded okay yeah yeah so he certainly is like making some conspicuously poor decisions i'm gonna wink at uh, Dirk to let him know that he's being had, you know, privately when the other guy's not. You know, like I'll lean over and I'll help this guy with this car. And, like, oh, yeah, yeah. and then I look at Dirk and I'm like, um, <laughs> uh, 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 after like you've been in for like two two rounds of hands, mm -hmm. um, he's like, uh, we should go all in. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's like, he's like uh, I, I, maybe something of this place distracts you. Maybe. Uh, what if we put a steak on the table? That that may help me maintain my concentration. And he Is there a vampire away. somewhere nearby? <laughs> so I'm suddenly out. alert. I'm like... <laughs> he pulls out a couple of uh, shillings and drops on the table. A couple of shillings? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's all the money I have. <laughs> exactly right. Like I said, all in, bro. <laughs> uh, um, uh, I think Dirk is like, ah, I... I like Actually, how you make you this decision after you know you failed. <laughs> well, so, so, so it's like the first the first couple of rounds were just like like we didn't bet anything, right? It was yeah. just we were playing for fun. Um, I don't actually play for money. Um, in the in the regiment, we would bid uh, or bet chores or favors or you know that sort of thing. No one um, no one wanted to lose their drinking money, right? Uh, but I'll, I'll gladly uh, bet the next round of drinks. Oh, uh, Tish, uh, the, um, let me, you, you have been most most uh, uh, efficacious for me. Let, allow me to order the drinks for this round anyway. He, and he, like, he like signals to Gustav to like bring over another round of drinks. Ice water, please. <laughs> <laughs> Ice water. <laughs> he, 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 he does, he buys a round of drinks. So. Like he's 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 not going to push you to play for money if you don't want to. Uh, sure, but yeah, you, you get the impression he's going to lose interest pretty quickly in this conversation, though. Yeah, and, uh, and look and start looking for the next rube. Yeah, um, yeah. Dirk Dirk doesn't want to play for money. Um, he's a he's a wholesome soldier boy who uh, needs his two shillings. <laughs> he's got to make a new life in the capital. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to go over to talk to the coachman. It's just, just waiting for the moment when they both look particularly drunk. Yeah. Oh, you know. they're, they're, it's like they're, they're already swaying in their, in their seats. So I think um, when Lutger goes to do that, uh, Dirk is actually going to go speak with or try and talk to uh, the noble woman. <gasps> oh, okay. Well, let's let's knock over let's knock over the, uh, the 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 coachman first. I may have literally knock them over by the end of this, but <laughs> look, we've seen Ludger as a sort of fumbling congenial priest, but it's time to put the robes on with these two. You know, he approaches them with the sternness a sixteen-year-old can muster, which is not very much. But <clears throat> well, can I just ask you both to make perception rolls for me, please? Perfect. Sure. The raven is eating a symbol of Sigmar <laughs> and is bleeding Nurgle pus. Astounding, um, astounding failure. 
<clears throat> uh, You're really good at this game, Spoon. Yeah, man. <laughs> Marginal failure. Okay. Zero. So, zero. Zero. Come on now. Give me some okay. credit. So, so you notice that, like, so from across the bar, you notice like a, a poster on the wall, um, but you can't read it from where you are, but it's like some sort of proclamation. You didn't notice when you came in, but there's some sort of proclamation. You, you have to go over to have a look at it properly. I'm going to round about these, <clears throat> these coachmen first. Yeah. So the uh, the head coachman appears. Well, so they, look, this is what they look like. Well, they get yeah, they get now. portraits too. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> Doctor uh, Doctor Doom toots when he pleases. This was twenty two euro well spent. Yeah. Uh, Gentlemen. Ah, please sit. Would you like a drink? No, thank you. It can be considered unhealthy for both mind and soul to consume and imbibe too much. They're, they're like silent for three seconds and then mm -hmm. they both burst, burst into life. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you are a funny man, my, my young friend. Yes. I'm Gunnar. This is my associate Holtz. We are the uh, coachman of Ratchet Lines. I wanted to speak to you about your carriage leaving tomorrow. Toward the oh, Althorf yes. line, yes. You need travel. We are heading to the Inn of Seven Spokes, fifty miles closer to Outdorf. It's uh, on the on the main Midland to Outdorf way, so you should be able to find a, a, another carriage easily to get you the rest of the way. That is fantastic to hear. I believe that my temporarily traveling companion Dirk may also join me. What is the fare to transit on your vehicle? Uh, for two of you, ah, four shillings. I look at them with a uh, sc reprobate scolding. Like, this is, gentlemen, delinquency. Please, I ask of you to look in your hearts and come back to me with an offer that is not an insult. Uh, give me a haggle roll. Okay. How about a reproach roll or like uh, <laughs> maybe I could I give him a scholarly that you're that you're sixteen, like it's <laughs> like uh, beardless I, I, kid. I, I, I'll give you plus twenty because of their inebriated state. Uh. Yep. Yep. That's yep. Really Didn't need the plus twenty. Yeah. I'm just that good. Okay. No worries. Um, so they will drop it down to a shilling each. Now, James, I have to ask you, we only have basically two shillings and yes. 50 miles out of 150 more. You know, it's, that's pretty expensive, right? Like, this is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, it, it will be cheaper on the main road because you certainly like, you know, mm. it's one of those ones where there's only a carriage every four days. Whereas when you get to the end of the, uh, end of the seven spokes, there should be like multiple carriages a day, so therefore it would be cheaper. But still, it is it is half your money unless you like stopped somewhere to, to, to make more money because you can sort of ply your trade to, to raise funds. I don't know that uh, priests ply a trade particularly well. Well, it's you, you have a collection bowl. It's true. I will. I don't feel like this crowd would be particularly receptive, but. This price is acceptable, and I will discuss it over with my companion as well. I slide my version of a shilling, which is apparently 12 pennies. Uh, he, he bites it to check its authenticity and then... Oh uh, my god, listen. <laughs> this is... I, I've been playing him pretty straight lace, but this is still a 16-year-old teenage boy, and you just implied that a priest would lie to him, and... No. Oh. He's also like, he, he's like running his finger on the edge to make sure it hasn't been, hasn't been shaved. All right, I definitely take umbrage to this, and I say, Gunnar, how how dare you look down upon a priest of Sigmar? How dare you, oh. sir? Yeah, yeah, sorry, you're a priest. I didn't realize. I just gesture at the robes and the holy <laughs> symbol that's around my neck. Right. He like he like blinks a few <laughs> times and then nods. Sorry, sorry. 
I didn't mean to be of offense to you. Was deeply I'll, I'll, offensive. I'll, I'll punch him in the ribs. The two of you may want to consider sobering up, gentlemen. The gods look unfavorably on one who tempts the devils. They they nod, chastised. And then the moment you leave, they call over the innkeeper to speak. Of your course they do. <laughs> <laughs> innkeeper, your finest soundin. <laughs> <laughs> right, Meanwhile, Spoon. Spoon is picking up a new girlfriend. <laughs> um, um, so, yeah, go ahead. So you know, you know how I, I, you have, I have them here. They have them in America. But when you go to a shopping mall and there's people that want to sell you like cellular services or like want you to come to like join their their Bible study group, that they they stand in shopping malls and approach you as you walk past. You know that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And how the, the only way to avoid them is to like pretend you don't see them or like look down or look at your phone. Yeah, that's that's what you get from this lady as you approach her table. Like she she tries to. Um, ignore the fact that you exist by looking anywhere except where you are mm -hmm. whereas um the 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 younger girl and the the woman like the, the armored woman sort of uh watch you as you approach sure um so i think uh seeing that dirk would go uh to the maid and yes. uh say to her uh Tell your lady that uh, Dirk Einbecker of House Einbecker would like to speak with her. All right. Um, I would like you to give me a charm roll. Sure. And it's going to be at plus 10. Okay. Are you, oh, so you got no blood too, actually, as well. So yes. it's actually it's going to be at plus 30 then. Plus 30. Okay. All right. Um, like she, she leans over and they, they, they talk quietly, you know, uh, like, even, even like sort of hand up to the, to the mouth. Um, sure. Uh, and uh, then the, the, the girl sort of like steps away from the table so she can talk to you without sort of, you know, having to stand right, look, look up at the table. Mm -hmm. um, Lady Isolde is very tired and was about to retire. Uh, are you heading on to Outdorf in the morning? Perhaps she could talk with you uh, in the carriage if you are traveling with uh, traveling the same way uh i am indeed headed to outdorf uh that should be fine sorry and you said your name was lord uh i'm becker i'm De i'm becker okay um yeah i i, I will let ladies all know she uh, perhaps after breakfast when the carriage is ready to go you should meet and, and talk Sure. And so Dirk will like look over her at the the lady and like give uh you know his best uh courtly bow. Okay, no worries. Okay. So so she sort of like returns like a, a nod which has all the politeness of I, I have to do this. Sure. Um, yeah, like yeah. I really don't want to talk to you. <laughs> yeah. And 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 by the same token, the like the, the other woman at the table gives you like the, you know, I'm watching you and if you try anything, I will stab you between the ribs. Yeah. Sort of um and so uh, speaking of the the like bodyguard woman yep. um can I like get a feel for like you know how much of a badass she is? Okay. Um yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> several several like purity seals and some awesome looking armor. Yeah. Um and, and and like the scars of multiple battles. Sure. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. So so like uh, you know, I would like equivocate her to like a regimental sergeant or something like that. Oh, oh more like someone who has, um, yeah, so it's, yeah, like, so yeah, definitely like an enlisted style, like not certainly someone that spent a lot of time uh, in in the front lines. Okay. All right. Yeah, you can't you can't see it there, but she has, she, you know, when she unfolds her arms, she has knuckle dust on one of her hands. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, and then Dirk will just return return to his uh, table that he shares with uh, Lutger. Okay, no worries. Hey, Pete, are you done with, uh, with what you were doing? I mean, I left them because I'm upset with them, and they okay. then clearly continued their rabble rousing. Yeah. 
how weird would it be for a priest to come back after that and like get seriously religious with them um so probably they like it's interesting imagine to them you're like an altar, an altar boy you know so that your age is not helping you here um and they've got they've got something that you want we i travel on their on their uh, i mean i've already you, paid them for that i'm not concerned right, about right. that part i'm concerned about saving their souls okay i mean you get the important it's like you know what it's like trying to argue with a drunk person you know it's, yes. it's like trying yes, to argue with a child it's even even when you win you lose um it's better but it's best is not to engage if you, if you want it like in the morning when they're when they're sober is that what you would tell before. volkar the grim though would you say to the Grand Theonogist, no, don't go over to those drunk men. What would you tell him to do, James? I'm just saying. But I would summon say, holy fire Theon down on them? Like, know, just Volkmar, what are you doing here? <laughs> should, should we be fighting the chaos, chaos hordes in the north? <laughs> I'm just saying, take away my uh, youth. What would a priest do here? That's Thanks. what he would do. I will make a scene. Uh, first, I will tell Dirk. Uh, <clears throat> Dirk. Yes, Luca. They have agreed for one shilling to transport us. Our friend was right. They attempted to charge two shillings apiece. I talked them down. I am appalled by their reprehensible behavior. They carried on in front of me and treated me as if my money wasn't good enough for them as if i was lying to them hmm. now i will do what any priest in a bar should do and then i will stand up i will take a drink of my ice water and with all 16 years of bravado i will march over there and say now see here gentlemen you are carrying on and you are making a mess of oh wait where did my german accent go i lost it a while ago <laughs> You are making a mess of this location. Sigmar Heldenhammer himself has said that you can be better men. That is the belief that unites all of us in the Empire. And right now, you are being worse men. I suggest that you stop drinking and you retire to your rooms so that you are not too drunk to operate tomorrow, Gunnar. And other guy whose name I didn't write down. Colts. All right. Uh, I, I, you can see, at this point, uh, um, Spoon, like um, uh, Gustav, the, the the publican, he's like you know quickly coming over to try and like avoid a scene. Um, but mm -hmm. uh, oh, I'm here to make a scene, man. I'm carrying <laughs> all up in their business. Yeah. Um, oh, what we what we call this? Uh, I mean, it's it's probably a skill I don't have. Yeah, um, <laughs> Uh, leadership, yeah. I, I make make a leadership roll. I'll give you plus twenty both for your station and their their drunk state. Perfect. Perfect. Can't wait to bomb this. All right, 47, 47, 47. Oh, would have been better with a forty-seven. That's all I'm saying. Is there a way to to make a re-roll like in? Uh, yeah, you can spend spend, can spend a, um, um, a fortune point. I will do that. Uh, do I just do I just lower so my just, fortune by one yeah, or right, right, right click it will go down? All right, and that's temporary, right? I get that back Every, at yeah. okay. So, uh, uh, yeah, after each adventure, it resets to your fate level. I'm on forty-seven. Oh, oh, one! Wow. <laughs> Success. Wow, yeah. You see, I called upon Sigmar Heldenhammer, and he came. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah okay they they explode in holy light i mean they <laughs> oh, that's not what i'm looking for <laughs> i'm just thinking maybe backed by the flame of the you know the hearth fire that you know because i came directly from there maybe the sparks cast up a twin-tailed comet behind me while i'm talking and they're not scared of me they're like oh that's scary that's bad <laughs> But it's like, they, but only they see it. <laughs> only they see it, yeah. yeah, like, yeah so, I mean, I mean it, it, that in itself is partially um, so good. Like, they instantly, like, you know, eyes go a bit wide and yeah, they look at each other and, and sort of look like, 
look quite sorry for the circumstances and start to like get up and settle their uh, their tab and everything. Gentlemen, have a good evening, and I say good night to you. And then I will march back over to Dirk, feeling a hundred times more manly. <laughs> I apologize. I don't like losing my temper. I do not know what you said to them, Luker, but whatever it was, it seemed to work. I explained to him. I feel like you probably did hear him because he raised his voice. I uh, I apologize. I I lost my temper and I... uh, He's going to say he shouted at them, but really he was just speaking loud. I I don't like to lose control like that. And again, it was really just like, you should go to bed. bed. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it seemed to work for you. And he takes a, a long drink <laughs> from, from the mug of ale that he ordered. Yeah, but you're not carrying on and sure. tacitly insulting him like that. Yeah, yeah. You're also treating not him. trying to charge him two shillings. Two for shillings for a traffic ride. Come on now. What is it, Uber? Six times rates right now? What's happening? Is there a Miley yeah, Cyrus a, concert? Yeah it's, a, like... yeah, it's a weekend and event rate. <laughs> Taylor uh, Swift was spotted nearby. Sure enough, Lady is old and her entourage um, leave to head to bed. Um, uh, so that just leaves the uh, the scholar, probably Philippe also, he, um, working out there's no one he can, he can screw out of their money, he heads off to bed. <laughs> so pretty much just leaves the scholar um, and yeah, you guys plus probably like a couple of locals that are now starting to leave. I just want to peek at the book to see what the title is, you know? If it's like, Pleasure Gardens of Nurgle, How to Reshape Your Flesh and Become a New You. <laughs> or if it's like, Mathematica. Yeah, I mean, look, it's probably one of those books that is... Okay, so, um, hmm, it's probably book requires a skill on your part. Uh, I need to roll a skill to... Yeah. For book so identification. Like, it's like it's like it, what, it, it's a, lot of, a lot of books at this age didn't actually have title pages. Mm. On the, oh, yeah, okay. On the That's right. Right. But you can yeah. get an idea for like what's in the. So give me a give me a plus twenty on evaluate. All right. Nope. Not with the ninety. Right. Okay. Yeah, you're not sure. It, it's it's lo- lots of writing, no pictures. Well, I shall get a room and retire. Have a good evening. I will see you in the morning, Luger. Luger takes one last sip of his cold ice water. <sighs> Refreshing. Before leaving. Right. Anything else you want to do in the, in the bar before bed, Spoon? Um... No, I don't think so. I think uh, Dirk will also just head up to a room. Okay, no worries. I reckon we take a quick break here so I can get a drink. Yep, sure. me too. All this, talk, all this talk of ice water has made me thirsty. I know, cold, delicious. I, I got it waiting right back there for me. All right, friends, we'll be back in the second half in like eight minutes. Stick around. <laughs>